Hey guys, and welcome back. We just got some brand new national polling data out from Quinnipiac. It's the first update that they've had with their national numbers. In the past couple of weeks, the prior poll was taken towards the end of January, and we've definitely had some catalysts since that point in time. First and foremost, the Iowa caucus, as well as this New Hampshire debate that recently took place and some significant changes in the numbers. If we just take a look back at recent history, this dates all the way back to early October. This has not been a great polling resource source particularly for Bernie Sanders, where if we take a look a handful of months ago, he was polling in the mid to lower teams, bottoming out there at just 11% back in mid-October. And throughout this stretch, this is actually the first national Quinnipiac poll where we see Bernie Sanders leap into first place. And he actually has a considerable margin now between himself and the second place option. So we can see Sanders gains four points from where he was a couple of weeks ago, now up to 25% in first place, where Biden, he takes a significant step back. He loses nine percentage points. And I feel like there's a lot of lost confidence right now in the Biden supporters, given how poorly he showed in the Iowa caucus. And we're getting to the New Hampshire primary tomorrow. Biden isn't expected to do all that well in New Hampshire either. So that could be another potential catalyst where he fades back a bit in terms of this national picture. We'll see if this is a continuing trend for Biden or not. But the Quinnipiac polls have been relatively fair for Biden throughout this process. This is the first time over this course of the past handful of months where he's dipped down into the teens there at 17% in second place. So the difference there, it's pretty evident that Sanders has had a very big positive catalyst over the past couple of weeks, whereas Biden's weakness in the Iowa caucus in particular has shaken the confidence among his supporters. So then we also see the big news to take out of this one is Michael Bloomberg is starting to position himself as a very strong possibility as a centrist moderate to go head to head against Sanders, as opposed to Joe Biden, where we see Bloomberg down here, he gained seven points from where he was a couple of weeks ago. Now, Bloomberg has by and large been able to go through this process without getting challenged all that much because he hasn't been on the debate stage. And we'll see how much his support ends up sticking with him because he underperformed what the polls were saying in Iowa. And you just never know when your campaign is propped up almost essentially by ad buys, how committed that type of support ends up being is yet to be seen. But as Bloomberg gets into these states where he has a little bit more in the way of support, we'll see if it actually shows up in Turns out on election day, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. But he does pick up seven points from where he was a couple of weeks ago. He's in third place in this instance at 15%. And then Elizabeth Warren, she's kind of been hanging out in that mid-teens range for the better part of the past few months. She peaked there back during the month of October. She took a big step back in November. She's kind of been hovering around that place since that point in time. In this one, she's in fourth place at 14%. And then not necessarily an extremely encouraging poll here for Pete Buttigieg. He's put a ton of resources and effort into having success in Iowa and New Hampshire, and it definitely helped him in Iowa. And he's probably going to do pretty well here tomorrow in New Hampshire. But it's still a concern for the Buttigieg campaign that he's not appealing to a national audience. It's more so just these areas areas where he's put a ton of resources into. And we see in this national poll, he does take a tick up to 10%. This is up four points from where he was a couple of weeks ago. So he's definitely getting a bump, but similar to the kind of bump that Bernie Sanders was able to get a four percentage point leap there up to 25 for Pete. He goes up to 10%, but he still has to get past Elizabeth Warren, Michael Bloomberg, and Joe Biden to seriously contend in that top tier along with Bernie Sanders. We'll see if Buttigieg is able to do that or not. Maybe he gets another boost out of New Hampshire. Maybe not. We'll have to see where the polling data trends after that. And then the candidates behind that are a bit lower. Clearly, we have Amy Klobuchar, not necessarily a great sign for her either, where she was at 7%. In this one, she's at four percentage points. She looks like she's taking a step forward in New Hampshire. Maybe she can surprise. And we have seen other polls where Klobuchar has been taking some steps forward. Perhaps this is just an anomaly or maybe a trend where Klobuchar is going to continue to have an issue getting towards that double-digit percentage point of support. Not necessarily the sign that the Klobuchar team wanted to see with these updated national numbers at just four percentage points and losing from where she was just a couple of weeks ago. And then also Andrew Yang, he's there pulling in 2%. He is down one point and all the other candidates are at one percentage point or less. So now I want to go through and take a look at some other polling data that we're getting here from Quinnipiac. So the next question here is, which candidate do you think would be the best leader? 
And this is a category that Biden has been doing pretty well in, but again, takes a big step back in this one, down nine percentage points in that instance, where he's now tied at the top with Bernie Sanders, who's bringing in 22% as well. He gains four points, where Elizabeth Warren loses three points, Buttigieg gains five points, Bloomberg gains four points with that particular question. And then going down, who has the best policy ideas? Sanders was just able to eke past Elizabeth Warren in the prior result, but he takes a step forward in this one up to 27%, followed by Warren at 16, Biden at 14, and then Bloomberg at 10, Buttigieg at 9. And we see this with a lot of national polls or even state-specific polls where when they actually get down to the nitty-gritty and ask different policy-related questions, this is where Sanders tends to do his best. It's looking like that is the case again with some improved numbers here from this updated Quinnipiac poll. And then they also asked, who do you think has the best chance of winning against Donald Trump in 2020? And this has been an area that's, it really felt like it has propped up Joe Biden a lot over this past year doing pretty well in many of the polls. He tended to do very well in terms of people thinking that he would be the toughest opposition to Donald Trump. But again, given the weakness that he showed in the Iowa caucus, not a great look for him. He craters in this instance, losing 17%. With this particular question, he was at 44% just a couple of weeks ago. Now, very similar to Bernie Sanders at the top. So you have Biden at 27, Sanders at 24. And Sanders gains a bit in this instance where he was at 19%. And then you have Bloomberg also gaining quite a bit in this category. He was at 9% in this one. He's up to 17%. Then next, taking a look at the head-to-head matchup between these upper-tier Democratic hopefuls and their matchup against Donald Trump in the general election. Biden leading by 7 percentage points, 50% to 43 We can see Sanders just doing a little bit better. He's at 51 to 43, but pretty comparable to what Biden had head-to-head against Donald Trump. And then Elizabeth Warren not doing quite as well as those top two options where she has a four-point lead, 48 to 44 percentage points. Also Pete Buttigieg with a 4% lead, 47% to 43 over Donald Trump. Amy Klobuchar actually doing a little bit better than both Warren and Buttigieg in this matchup where she's at 49% to Trump, who's at 43. And then Michael Bloomberg looking really solid here in his potential matchup at 51 compared to Trump, who is at 42. And those are all the data points that I wanted to take a look at in this updated national poll from Quinnipiac. If you'd like to take a look at all of it for yourself, I'll have a link posted to this PDF down in the video description. This is a shock poll. Clearly, big swings. Biden losing almost double digits from where he was just a couple of weeks ago. He loses nine percentage points. Bloomberg gains seven. Sanders gains four. Buttigieg gains four. Some really interesting stuff here. It's the first time Bernie Sanders has had the outright lead in a national Quinnipiac poll, and he has it by a decent margin where those next options are kind of clustered there in the teens with Biden, along with Bloomberg, Warren, and then Buttigieg is a little bit behind them as well in the national poll. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Consider subscribing to continue to get more updates on these polls, and I hope to see you back here for future videos.